do some 90-90 kinetic stretches, uh, both external and internal. I'm going to set up um, at sort of 45 degree angle to you guys, because um, I think that that sometimes helps teach some of this stuff so that you can actually see what's going on. Um, but you can see, so my straight ahead right now is over here. Um, you can totally uh, kickstand, put your hands down here to kind of get started into this motion. But remember, the key thing with 90-90 is that you're looking at two 90 degree angles. So your front leg should be 90 degrees, rear leg should be 90 degrees. And we're going to do some kin stretch here. So kin stretch means that you're moving consistently and you are um, engaging both the regressive and the progressive tissue on either side of the joint. What? <laughs> um, I know, the crazy, uh, crazy different words here. Um, we're going to find that regressive tissue first. Uh, which is usually hard for some people to kind of locate. So what you're going to do, if you can take both of your hands off of the floor, you're going to take both your hands, put it on your knee and your ankle in front. And what I want you to do is I want you to pull that front leg up so that there's pressure being put into your knee and your ankle. So that muscle that you're engaging to pull your knee and ankle off the ground, that is the regressive tissue. That's what you're gonna use at the beginning of the stretch to pull yourself down into the stretch. The progressive, that's when you're pushing down into the floor, the knee and the ankle going down. Usually people don't have trouble finding that. Um, if, you can, if you can't do this with both hands off the ground, go ahead and put your left hand back here, take your right hand, put it on the knee, and find that regressive tissue that way. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Now, finally, the kin stretch. So, put your hands here, just so you can isolate that feeling. Um, turn your torso forward, so it's going straight out over your left femur. Find the regressive tissue by pushing into your hands. And now take the hands off, pull yourself down into the stretch by firing that regressive tissue, and now go the other way. Push down into the floor, to pull yourself out of the stretch. We're gonna do at least nine more of those. So engage the regressive, pull yourself down into the stretch, and then push the knee down into the floor to push yourself back up. Pull, push, pull, push. Sometimes it can help to put your hands over your chest. Pull, Push, five more. Pull yourself down into the stretch. Push yourself up out of the stretch. Pull yourself down into the stretch by trying to pull up on your knee. Push yourself down into the stretch, out of the stretch. Two more. Pull, push. Pull, and push. Whew. I hope that your left hip feels as woken up as mine does. <laughs> okay, now we're going to turn to the trailing hip, the internal rotation. Grab that pad or pillow, go ahead and put it underneath the front hip. That's going to actually kind of make this next part possible. Okay, uh, hands over the chest again. Now, same kind of idea when we're doing the regressive tissue on the trailing leg. The regressive tissue, you're trying to pull that ankle off of the floor. Obviously, it won't work. The more you lean out this way, now you can see I can get my foot up off the floor. Uh, that may cause you to cramp, <laughs> just so you know. But in case you want to find that tissue, you can lean all the way out here and then go ahead and pick that foot up off the floor just like you're doing this. The reason that this movement is so hard is that coming into this position puts you at the end range of this hip joint. 
uh, which is what we're trying to work on. We're trying to work on the end ranges of motion. So what we're going to do here, so you're going to start facing forward, turn your torso towards that trailing leg, and now by trying to pull that rear foot off of the ground, you're going to side bend your shoulder down towards that trailing foot, and now push the foot into the floor to come back to starting. Okay, that's one. Turn, pull, push, back to start. Two, turn, pull, push, rotate. Three, turn, pull yourself into the stretch, push yourself out of the stretch, rotate. Turn, pull, push, rotate. Five, turn, pull yourself into the stretch, push yourself out of the stretch, back to the beginning. Six, turn, pull, push, rotate. Seven, turn, pull yourself into the stretch, push yourself out of the stretch. Eight, turn, pull yourself into the stretch, push out, back to the start. Nine, turn, pull yourself into the stretch, push yourself out of the stretch, and back to the start. Whew. Sometimes when doing internal rotation work, you feel it in your low back. That's good. Um, a lot of the time, um, if you do have impeded internal range of motion in the hip, that is going to end up causing you to have back problems. So if we can expand that internal range of motion, hopefully some of those will start to go 